pays out to get your beauty product in the hands of celebrities and influencers around the world for free. And stick around till the end because my last tip is one that no one really does. So just to paint the picture, I used to work at Dior in the head office in Paris and I used to work with influencers and celebrities around the world. And sometimes I had a budget, sometimes I didn't. So I learned a thing or two there, but also building my brand where I pretty much had no budget at the beginning um, and it was COVID, so everything was online. I had to really quickly learn how to launch the perfect strategy when dealing with influencers and celebrities. So one thing I want to say is, first step is thinking about your history, like who you know, and maybe leveraging those existing relationships that you built over years. It is very important, but do not rely on it. I can tell you, I had a network list that was all the kind of verified people were following me that I knew in my time with Dior. Pretty sad, I know, but trust me, it was quite a valuable spreadsheet when it came to like who I'm going to reach out to, who I'm going to send products to that I could already rely on on day one. So I did what you imagined. I DM'd a lot of people and I said, hey, a long time since we last spoke. I'm about to launch my brand and I would love to send you my products. And let me tell you, probably like 95% of them did not post or did not support. So I will just say with that is it's an important thing to do, but I probably could have done a better job and I'll give you some tips now on how to make sure you can get them to maybe support and post a bit more likely. Um, but at the same time, never rely on it. That's something I would say a lot of people come to me that want to create a brand and they're celebrities or influencers and they straight away say, hey, I've got this whole army of people I know, we're going to sell like a million dollars straight away, easy, done. I'm like, probably that might not happen. That's the first thing I would say is make your list, make your user existing connections, but then figure out the best way to communicate and put yourselves in their shoes. So for example, one tip I would do is instead of just messaging them and saying, hey, I'm launching my brand, we'd love to send my products. I would add a line like, hey, I'm about to send you the products. We'd love for you to try them and let me know what you think of them. You have a reason for them to reach back to you, but also for you to check in. It's also very important because you also want to make sure that they've received it. The amount of times I send products and never chased and then I realize a year later that they never end up receiving it because DHL dropped it to another neighbor. I didn't have time to look at every DHL tracking link. That's very important to have follow-ups. The follow-ups are crucial because it gives them a time to give you feedback, which is helpful when developing the brand, but also maybe reminds them to maybe, hey, like do a story or tell your friend or support, which um, they're, I'm sure like they're your friends. They're happy to do it. It's just people are busy and they forget. And that's probably what it is. But without that follow-up, you're probably going to not get as much people posting. Number two, I would also really think about ways that you can maybe like dangle a carrot to some of these celebrities influencers that are important. So for example, saying, hey, we'd love to send you the product and later down the line, budget picks up, we'd love to work with you in a paid capacity. But for now, if you are able to you know, support or share some love with your community, that would be so grateful. That goes a long way. It shows that you're willing to like, you know, reward them later for them helping you at the beginning. But at the same time, you're kind of getting a bit more clear to the point and asking them to show their support, which I think is important, especially over this existing relationship with people. But imagine you don't have anyone you know, or you don't feel confident enough to reach out to your industry connections. Then you can do what I did, which was pretty much go with a blank canvas and an open mind and reach out to some people that are your potential dream influencers that resonate with your brand story and products. So I DM'd a lot of people and I had two strategies. I had one which was, here are the people that I just want to send the products, do all the things that I was saying, right? Which I didn't do at the beginning, which I should have, but generally like, hey, we'd love to send you the products, get your feedback. If you're willing to post, amazing. We'd love to work with you in a paid capacity later. But once you do that, maybe 50, 100 people, you might get 10 or five or 20 of that reply. That's already a great step. Sometimes I would like unsend and send it again and they would reply the second time because they just missed it. That works too. And remember, these are people that don't even know you, never heard of you. So it does take time to build that. And especially if they haven't heard your brand, the chances are they're very unlikely to respond, but maybe, just maybe they will and you'll be surprised. Your tone of voice, your type of message is very important. So for example, for us, when we reached out to a lot of South Asian content creators and told them we were gonna be one of the first South Asian brands to launch in Sephora, we were building this from my grandma's heritage. They read that and straight away resonated and wanted to support. So find ways to connect with those people that perhaps don't even know the brand or don't even know you, right? Second, I would then have a second hat, which is those that you want to develop a long-term partnership with and you know eventually allocate budget, either immediately if your business allows or later on. That I would go straight to the point of, hey, we'd love to connect to your agent, arrange a call to how we can work together. Or, hey, we'd love to get a Zoom call with you, talk a bit more about the brand and how I can involve you because I'm a huge fan. 
and you've got to make sure there is not that many of these people because they need to feel nurtured, special, and also you don't have the time to do that for every single person. So sometimes it might be two, three, four people and they should be really people that you actually potentially want to have as ambassadors or people that you partner with long term. And uh, we did that a lot and um, it sometimes it takes years to cultivate it. Like people I talked to two years ago, I'm now potentially going to work with in a bigger capacity, so stay tuned. But it's really exciting to know that these things are relationship building. They do take time, but they become very powerful later on because you started conversating with them at the beginning and they've seen your brand grow and they want to help you grow too and also be part of that journey. Now, this is all assuming you are doing the DMs, you're doing the work, but there's also partners that you can work with that can help you reach these people, right? There are agencies or influencer agencies that charge you a fee to send products to certain people. We even did something with Push, which was Kourtney Kardashian's brand that we paid a fee and she sent the product to 50 celebrities. And when would I get my products in like Justin Bieber's and Rosalia's hand, right? I can tell you we did that. It wasn't the most return of investment friendly, but amazing kind of image and awareness. So you have to remember everything doesn't always have an ROI, but has a later value. And it's okay at the beginning to stroke your ego. We sometimes have these ideals that we want to do when creating a brand. It's your brand. Do what you want. If you really want to have Kourtney Kardashian post about your brand, figure out a way to make it happen, right? But you will learn over time, eventually, as the business starts strengthening, what actually makes sense and what doesn't. But my final tip, which I think not many people do, and this does require a bit of money, so just you know, do park some budget aside for this, is to work with your dream celebrity, I'm talking like top tier celebrities, often can be very expensive, out of reach because they've got contracts with other beauty brands, but you can contact the people close to them. That is usually in the lines of stylists. So hairstylists, you know, makeup artists, these are upcoming, also like celebrities, influencers, that are often represented by agencies. And here are a few of the agencies that you can reach out to. Usually what happens, especially during award season, they're open up for work. It might cost you a thousand, two thousand, sometimes up to ten thousand dollars to sponsor a stylist. And what you get for this is usually a reel or some photos, some BTS, you know, usually in the hotel of them using the product. You have to remember not every celebrity will act a certain way each time. So you can't guarantee certain deliverables, but more or less you can imagine there'll be certain things met. And um, if you're very lucky, you might get a deliverable where the stylist has the product next to the celebrity's face. And that's an amazing asset to have. But usually it might be the finished good and they just tag, you know, they use Fable and Main on this look. But either way, the most effective use is you can repost that, talk about it in your story, but also get some PR quotes for then some press releases that can go out to get some articles. So this could be, for example, this celebrity got an Oscar winning look with Fable and Maid. That can then link to your website or your retailer and have a lot of potential ROI as well for a minimal cost. And maybe it's a great way for also the celebrities to discover your products and then eventually buy your products, become fans of it, and then maybe one day you're ambassador. And let me tell you, that's something that happened with us. So I can tell you now, there is no right and wrong when it comes to working with celebrities and influencers. Just lead with your heart, put yourselves in their shoes and build a relationship over time. But you'll be surprised you can do a hell of a lot with no money. If you want some more tips on how to build a beauty brand, feel free to subscribe and I'll be posting a lot more content. And also let me know what you think about everything I said and if there's other tips that you have for the community down below.